Hello everyone. In our today's discussion, we will going to explain the reason behind the departure of the UK's Prime Minister Liz Truss. She used to be the Foreign Secretary under the Boris Johnson government, and she really took some brave decisions being the Foreign Secretary of her country. But when she became the Prime Minister of her country, she lost all her charm because she and her associates took some controversial decisions regarding tax policies, immigration policies, and the free trade agreement decisions policies regarding India. Her government was full of farcical decision. Because of that, the rebellion grew against her within her own party. Her popularity among the Brighton touches its nadir. Her popularity was so low that, according to the Redleaf and the Wilton Strategies poll this week, revealed the lowest approval rating it had ever recorded for any prime minister. Seventy percent of the Brighton disapproved her as the prime minister of the country. That means only thirty percent, or less than thirty percent, had some belief on her leadership. Her disapproval rating was also low among her Conservative Party and the Conservative voters. Sixty-seven percent of the Conservative voted against her in that poll. That means if general elections were held today, then fifty-six percent would vote for the Labour Party, while only twenty percent would vote for the Conservatives. So you can clearly get the full picture of her government's popularity. Some British tabloid even compared her prime ministerial tenure with the life cycle of the Latus. I am afraid to say you that the Latus won the battle at last. Because she resigned from her office, being the prime minister of the UK after 44 days, that is equivalent to the six weeks only. So, ex prime minister Lee Strauss has set a record and achieved something that only ever happened with the best and the worst. At a mere of 45 days in the office, she is the shortest serving prime minister in the British history. The Strauss has beaten the record of the George Canning, who died in 1827 after 119 days in the job. She achieved the distinctions of popularity in her short tenure because she accomplished a remarkable list of items that no one has ever achieved. Because she tarnished the popularity of the British reputation being an economical powerhouse of the world, and her party also lost the popularity being the politically prudent. Her economical decision put her country in such a bad shape that was far more chaotic in comparison of the 2016 Brexit referendum. So, in our today's discussion. We will mainly understand the Lee Strauss economical failure, rather the economical gamble, which put her country in the grip of stagflation. The stagflation basically means the combination of high inflation and collapsing economical growth. So UK's economy is collapsing. The main agenda of our government was growth, growth, and only growth. Because of that, the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK, basically the Finance Minister of the country, Kwasi Kwarteng, delivered a ministerial statement entitled "The Growth Plan" to the House of Commons. The House of Commons basically means the lower house, like the Lok Sabha in India. The growth plan was widely referred to the media as a mini budget. It contains a set of economical policies and the tax cut. But the tax cut was not designed for the middle class or the poor people. It was designed to benefit the six lakh sixty thousand richest Brightons. The government reduced the basic rate of income tax from 20% to 19%, and increased corporation tax from 19% to 25% from April 2023. And they had a plan to scrap the highest tax level of 45%. They were planning to reduce 45% tax level to 40% only. So it was beneficial for the richest only. And according to the Treasury official, the richest could benefit by up to 10,000 pound annually, and it would cost the British government 60 billion dollar. So it would create the black hole into the British economy. So mini budget was poorly designed for the country like United Kingdom. It was just a fiscal populism. The speaking of the mini budget, the budget was designed to achieve 2.5 percent annual growth. But Kumar Tang did not even mentioned how he was planning to achieve it without cutting down the government spending. His budget statement created the shock wave across the world market and the British market too. After the mini budget proposal, the British pound registered highest ever fall in our history. It also went low against the American dollar, reacted negatively to the increased borrowing required. The mini budget drew widespread criticism from the Economist, even from the IMF. The IMF rebuked the UK government to pull back the mini budget proposal, basically reconsider it because of its historical mistake that was made by this country almost 46 years back. In 1976, during the Stalin crisis, the UK government was forced to ask the International Monetary Fund for a financial bailout. Following the widespread negative response to the mini budget, the government scrapped the abolitions of the 45% tax rate after 10 days, and after 21 days, government also scrapped the increment of the corporation tax. So that was the biggest economical U-turn in the British economical history. That cost the UK Finance Minister Kwasi Kwarteng his ministry. He was fired from his post on October 14. 
only weeks into the office, making him the Britain's second shortest serving chancellor right after the Ian McLeod. The Kuartang served only for the 38 days. In case of the young McLeod, it was 30 days, but he was not fired. He died of the heart attack in 1970. But Kuartang was not the one who was the incompetent, and the biggest incompetent was the Swell of Eberman. She was the Home Secretary under the Lee Strauss government, and she made the horrified racial comment against India and the Indian people. That caused the Britain government the free trade agreement deadline with India, that was this year's Dipavali. But according to the Commerce Minister Piyush Goel, the free trade agreement with the Britain is almost gone. The Swell of Eberman basically wanted the free trade agreement, Indian money, Indian market, Indian technology, but he never wanted Indians to visit the Britain. Because according to her, Indian takes the advantage of the British visa policy and the overstayed in UK. And she even defended the British colonial rule. And she said, she is proud of being a British, not being an Indian origin woman. Her father was basically from the Indian state Goa. She also denounced the post-Indian Pakistan cricket violence as an uncontrolled migration and the divisiveness. The government was concerned that a trade agreement with India would increase the immigration to the UK. By the way, the FTA agreement was supposed to benefit the British more than India because the deal was aimed to increase the bilateral trade, facilitate the smooth movement of the people between the countries and the cut the tariffs on the scotch and the whiskey into the Indian market. So free trade agreement was supposed to help the British government. And we did not go to the United Kingdom for the free trade agreement. They came to us and they requested us to sign the free trade agreement. The Boris Johnson was basically requested the Prime Minister Modi to get the deal done. But after the Breverman racist comment, it put the deal in the gutter. And the Breverman comments never went well with the Indian government. The Indian government warned the UK government to make the comment cautiously about India and the Indian people. So in my view, it was good for India not to have a deal with the UK. Because India is already in talk with Israel, Canada and the other countries for the free trade agreement. It is not a loose battle for India, it is a loose battle for the Britain. Relationship always a two-way traffic. Both have to maintain the amicable relationship. If one wants to dominate, dominate the relationship, then it will break the amicability. Anyway, Lee Strauss government die her own death. It was about time when she will quit. It was all mess for her government and her country. The Russia described her as an catastrophically illiterate prime minister. And she is the disgrace being the UK prime minister, according to the Russian foreign ministry. The Brightons are really in bad shape. The world is in bad shape because of the Russia's invasions of the Ukraine and the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lee Strauss should have measured the water properly. I think she was trying to put herself in the equality of the great Margaret Thatcher. But she failed to understand that the growth needs an environment of the macroeconomic stability. After taking care of the macroeconomic parameters, the government need to go for the microeconomic reforms. Anyway, her time is gone. She will happily live her life because she earned £1,19,000 of her pension for her entire life. Now this is the time for the Conservative Party to choose their leader and the country's Prime Minister among the Penny Maudut, Rishi Sunak and the Ben Wallace. They have to choose their leader wisely because they have made a mistake. Now the questions. The first question is which organization developed the indigenous trainer aircraft HTT-40 which was recently unveiled. The first option is DRDO. Second option is HAL. Third option is BEL. Fourth option is ISRO. The second question is Durgaboti Tiger Reserve, which was notified recently, is located in which state or UT? The first option is West Bengal. Second option is Madhya Pradesh. Third option is Maharashtra. Fourth option is Andhra Pradesh. So this is the end of the topic. If you have any questions or any other kinds of inquiry, then please mail me to my email address, which is tuhin.power.academy at the rate gmail.com. Otherwise, you can go for the comment section and write the comment what kind of help you need.